Sally YouTube and welcome back to the Not Even French YouTube channel. This week we are jamming on some of my favorite French series to binge on Netflix. They are amazing French series that I have been kindly researching for you lately. <laughs> now I've been enjoying watching these shows, it's very fun preparing for these videos. Um, and I've been sussing out which series out there are the best, not only in terms of being French series, but really, really great to learn French with as well. Uh, it's been two long years since we've been kind of stuck in New Zealand, unable to get back to France, and these series have been an absolute lifeline for me, being able to be immersed in the culture and the language, and also be fun and entertained while I'm at it. So I'm very excited to share some of these with you. And I also find because it's so fun, and it's just part of your day-to-day -day habit anyway, watching a bit of Netflix, winding down, I really find it's one of the best ways to just absorb that French language. You're reading it with the subtitles, you're listening to it as well, and so it's a really good way to just integrate it as part of your day-to-day -day life. Now, if your Netflix account is limited when it comes to French movies and French series, and you'd like to actually tap into the French version of Netflix, I definitely recommend more VPN. This is the VPN that I use, and essentially, without geeking out on the tech, what it does is it allows your internet browser to believe that your computer is based in the country of your choice. So when I say that I am based in France on my computer, I can access not only the French version of Netflix, but French TV shows as well, France TV, TF1. I'm really able to access free French TV and news and series and movies as if I was a local. And NordVPN is super cool. It was just awarded the best VPN award for 2021, but it's got super fast servers, 5,500 plus in over 60 different countries, so there's never any lag whatsoever. There's no data logging. It actually protects your data when you're in public Wi-Fi spots like airports and hotels and cafes and whatnot, so there's a privacy element to it as well. It works in absolutely every country, even in China, and you can actually have up to six simultaneous connections as well. So you can definitely share the love. So if you want to unlock the entertainment websites, the TV shows, the news, all of that online media content in any country of your choice, I definitely recommend checking them out. Thanks to them partnering with me on this video. You can click the link in the description box down below or go to nordvpn.com slash notevenfrench or you can use the code notevenfrench as well. And when you sign up to a two year plan, you'll not only get a massive discount, but a bonus gift as well. So now that you are all set up from a technical point of view, let's jam on some of my favorite French TV series that you can use right now. Some of them are super recent. They're the best French TV series out there at the moment to learn French. Alrighty, so the first show that I really want to share with you is one that's very recent, and it's actually the first French reality TV show that I have loved. <laughs> I haven't watched a lot, to be fair. And usually I'm just watching fictional stories, you know, dramas, adventures, and this kind of thing. And this is actually following a real French family. So this series is called The Parisian Agency. And they are in the world of real estate agency, but not only any kind of world, but the luxury, high-end real estate market. They're based in Paris, but they also visit other areas as well. And if you have seen the reality TV show Selling Sunset, I did do a guilty binge of that a couple of months ago, but essentially it's very high end. They are based in LA, but they're really working with celebrity and high end clients to sell mansions over there. So I guess it's kind of the French version of that. But what sets the series apart is that you're following an actual family. So you've got the mum, the dad, and four boys. The parents and the three older boys all work together in this agency. And the younger boy is still at school, but he's probably destined to join the family business as well. So it's very much a family business. And what's really cool is that they're working with clients with five to 10 plus million euro budgets. And so these clients are very, very exigent. You know, they really know what they want. They deliver a detailed brief. And it's up to the agents to find the best apartments available on the market. And you actually get to go visiting with them. Obviously, you see beautiful shots of Paris and the suburbs and any other places that they visit as well. But you also get taken on visits and sometimes multiple visits per client of these outstanding properties that you would just never actually get to see in real life. Not only that, but they also dig into the personal side of the family a little bit as well. So uh, the eldest son gets married throughout the series. So you get to see a little bit of that wedding preparation and a typical French wedding in the South of France. And that's even interesting, right? In terms of what that looks like, what people are wearing, um, all of that kind of thing as well. What's quite specific about this family is that they've also got this very fusional family. And it's something that I hadn't really encountered before. And I remember moving to France and 
thinking how astounding it was, how close and fusional adult children are with their parents. And so for example, in this family, it's just the dream of the parents. They haven't always worked together. They wanted to make that a reality. They want all of their kids working together. Um, you know, the elder sons are in their thirties, the other, the late twenties. And yet the mum was saying, it's so important to me that all my children are at home every morning to have a family breakfast together. And at some point in the series, uh, there's a risk that that might change for one of the sons and the parents are absolutely devastated. They start dreaming up schemes to kind of emotionally manipulate them into staying. Like it's very, very intense. The worst thing that could happen to these parents is that their kids live elsewhere, right? That's quite an interesting cultural difference as well to pick up in this series. In terms of language, it's a really good mix because you've got the informal use of language with the family. You've got the more formal use of language with the clients. So in terms of language, you've got both the tu and the vu. And I would say overall, it's probably intermediate level. So it's not too bad. The next series I tried is a little bit of a wild card because it's kind of bilingual, it's half French, half English. It's called The Eddy. And it was a really interesting series. It's pretty specific. It's very French in nature. So essentially the storyline goes, it's about an American jazz musician who obviously did very, very well for himself over in the States. He went through some personal trauma and he ends up moving to Paris. And while he's in Paris, he starts a jazz club, doesn't have much money, um, and he pulls a group together and it's a group of misfits, or some expats, and just people who really see this club and this band as family. And what's really cool about the series is that it really focuses on one member of the band or, or someone around the band uh, per episode. And it's not showing that sort of super shiny, cliche, luxury side of Paris whatsoever. It's actually really more so focused on real life, especially from the lower to middle working class. And it's filmed in sometimes grungy environments and the suburbs where these characters are living. Um, there's also storylines about uh, sort of gang mafia related. Uh, there's definitely a bit of drama, but it's not a fast paced kind of action focused series um, in a more American way. It's, it's very French in the way that it's sort of like a lot happens, but nothing happens at the same time. It's really just following the lives of these people and it's not necessarily major dramatic storylines but just character development and things unfolding but if you like jazz music you'll really like it because obviously the jazz band are playing music quite a lot so you're hearing their songs and I just really liked the realness of it there were you know broken people sometimes broken down relationships it got quite dark at some points it's light in other points but it's not overly orchestrated kind of like a slightly more dramatic version of real life now, when they're speaking in French, you can choose to have English or French subtitles. And when they're speaking in English, you can have it so that there's French subtitles still showing. So even if it's English that you're listening to, at least you can read the French, even if it's not French all the time. I would say it's more so upper intermediate because you've got various degrees of slang. So you've got all different kinds of foreigners speaking French with their accents. So with the accents involved and whatnot, it can be a little bit harder to understand, but then you get those breaks with the English as well. So probably upper intermediate to advanced, I would say, and overall an interesting slow burn watch. Next up, we have Lupin season two. Now I know that I've already spoken about Lupin on this channel before, so I won't go into details, but this series is wildly popular for good reason. Firstly, you've got Omar Sy as the lead character, and just like he made Les Antouchables incredible, he makes Lupin incredible. I just love his style. I love his facial expressions. And you know, I talked a little bit about it being sort of Sherlock Holmes, James Bondy, and it's, it's kind of the French version of that um, tricks and gadgets. This season, what differentiates it from the last? The last was very much like tricks and toys and gadgets and traps and that kind of thing. And there's a lot more character development, I felt, in this season. A lot more tension, a lot more emotion, but you still have the fun and the tricks and the, and the plots and the twists, of course. Uh, so it's super, super cool. Definitely deserves all of the praise it's getting. I devoured it in about a week and I'm full of regret. <laughs> I would say it's intermediate to upper intermediate level of French for this one uh, but it's beautifully subtitled they've done a really good job because it's so popular and it's just a super addictive and fun watch alrighty next up I was so happy to stumble across this one criminal so criminal France is from 2019 and it's very short and sweet there are only three episodes okay so it is definitely a mini series but it is very intense and very enthralling I thoroughly enjoyed this one essentially it is centered around a police interrogation room for each episode, they have a different suspect in who is suspected of committing a really serious crime. And the same interrogation team work to essentially trip up or figure out what really happened. 
and the plot twists are really, really cool. Just to give you one example, the first episode is about a girl who claimed to be at Le Bataclan, the night on the 13th of November where there were the terrorist attacks in Paris. And just a disclaimer, because of course that actually happened, but this is a fictional series. They're interrogating her because she claimed to be at Le Bataclan, uh, where there were the mass shootings and the terrorist attacks. And she claimed that because victims of that night received financial benefits or indemnity. And it's really so that they could support them. Uh, maybe they couldn't go back to work. Maybe they were injured. Maybe psychological trauma uh, was stopping them from being able to get back into society and so on and so forth. And so they were receiving financial benefits to support them through that time. And so uh, she was saying that she was there and she lost her partner. And so it's very emotional. And then bit by bit, they are trying to figure out is she lying or not? And it's it's really interesting the interrogation tactics they use and you just go on this big journey and suddenly when the truth is revealed it's usually something that you weren't quite expecting which I really liked. Now in terms of language level I would definitely say this is more upper intermediate to advanced. Uh, they speak quite quickly in the interrogation room. They sometimes use jargon as well but the good thing with the series is that you can always pause it, google more advanced words, increase your vocabulary and then keep watching as well. Or what I find is that the context usually brings the language to life anyway so I know what they mean even if I hadn't necessarily heard that word before. I was gutted when I had watched all three episodes of the series but I was looking on Netflix and it turns out there's also a criminal UK, a criminal Spain and a criminal Germany so if you like the series buckle up for the ride because there is more where that came from. Okay so next up we have Mythomaniac. Now this is an interesting concept for a series. So essentially it centers around a French family. I'm not sure where they're based exactly but it's definitely not a uh, Paris or any recognizable big city or sort of landmark town. It looks like a sort of very basic French town and I think they did that on purpose because the whole premise is that you've got the husband and the wife and three kids and the wife is pretty miserable. She kind of exists like a shell of herself, right? She's doing everything for the family. She's underappreciated. The whole family takes her for granted. You've got the husband who's having an affair. You've got the teenage daughters who hate her for trying to enforce any kind of rule. You've got the other kids that just sort of see right through her. And so she's kind of just existing, not really thriving in life. And essentially she goes to the doctor for a scan because she's noticed some lumps around her breast and she gets the results back and they're completely benign. It's it's some um, harmless cysts, but it was a bit of a shock to her, right? And she actually decides, and this is the whole concept of the show, to lie about it. And she decides to tell her husband and tell her family that it's very serious and she's very sick. And so of course her life starts to change quite dramatically from this point in the way that her family and other people relate to her. She's finally getting appreciated, she's getting the attention, but she ends up of course tangling herself in a web of lies. Now I haven't finished this series so I can't tell you if the end was worth it, um, but from what I've watched so far I'm really enjoying it. Definitely gets points for character development, um, you can definitely feel there's something big brewing, it keeps you hooked, um, it's great acting, but I would say if you're looking for a French feel series, you know, that feels more like that cliche, like people dress beautifully and beautiful scenery and architecture and that kind of thing, it's not going to scratch that itch for you. Like, although it is French, it kind of looks like it could have been filmed almost anywhere, um, and it's just meant to portray a very, I think, average lifestyle and an average town and an average family kind of thing. So it's not really a series that you would indulge in to get that hit of sort of beauty and luxury and glamour in France at all. I would say the language level for this one is intermediate, it's pretty slow, uh, conversational, and the subtitles are really accurate. So overall, I would say it's a relatively easy watch and pretty bingeable as well. So those are the five series I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Remember, if you wanna watch TV from anywhere in the world, you can definitely check out NordVPN. I love that VPN. I feel like a bit of a secret spy actually. Being able to hack into any country's TV whenever I want to. I'd love to know if you've watched any good French TV series or movies lately. Definitely let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about these series. Have you watched any of them? How would you rate them? And let me know what you're gonna be binging next on Netflix. Otherwise friends have a great rest of your week and I will see you in next week's YouTube video. A bientôt!